Help support AMTV by becoming a patron, an AMTV staff member, and following us over on Twitter. Hi there guys, it's Adam Martin here, and welcome back to a brand new video, and today we're going to be talking about Amazon Freebie. Now Freebie is something that I've mentioned very briefly on the channel before, namely when Neighbours was being rounded down on Channel 5, and its future seemed to be in doubt. But before long it was announced it was actually returning on the Amazon Freebie service with a brand new string of episodes, from which it still continues to air them now. So why is Freebie back in my sphere of radar? Well, it's been announced that Amazon is apparently going to plot the closure of Freebie. Now this might sound like a, a bit of a shock because you might not be aware that anything negative about Freebie was floating around there in the in the media press. You know, it hadn't been failing as it were and Amazon of course has billions and billions of dollars at their pocket. So what is going on? Well, let's take a look at the news of it. US industry publication Adweek reports that Amazon is considering closing down Freebie in the coming weeks. According to the report, Freebie could be gone by early April. Wow, they could really wind it down in two months. That's That seems like a very short amount of time, but again, this is Amazon. Amazon currently has two standalone streaming services, Prime Video and Freebie, with reports suggesting the status quo can't be maintained. Freebie, which was formerly known as IMDb TV, has operated as a free yet ad-supported alternative to Prime Video in certain countries. And in the past two years, the service has become the home of Judge Judy successor, Judy Justice, and the new chapter of Australian Soap Neighbours in the UK, as we just mentioned. Yeah, the, the basic gist of Freebie, for those who don't know, is it is this free ad supported alternative you know it's you don't have to pay for it you just have to watch ads to go with it and it's it's something amazon offers and they offer a bunch of programs on there namely neighbors fans have been flocking to it the the, the loyalist neighbors fans to find out how the stories continued and it's really driven a whole bunch of new people to this streaming site you know it's not one that comes up in the big dogs of like netflix disney plus etc but it's a name you start to see reappear more and more and more it says, though, internationally, the situation has been different. In Ireland and other countries where Freeview wasn't rolled out, the same programs have been distributed through Amazon's main Prime Video platform. Whereas Freeview was ad-supported, Prime Video has been ad-free. Not anymore. Since Amazon made changes to Prime Video, both services are ad-supported, and both Freeview and Prime Video apps now host similar, if not the same, ad-supported programs. I didn't know that... Prime Video had been changed to be ad supported. Is that just like a new tier? Because as far as I was aware, Prime Video, you know, once you obviously pay for access to Prime Video, you know, you pay for Amazon Prime. I thought that was it. And then you could just obviously access content, you know, without ads. Is this a new tier? Is it a cheaper tier of Prime where you get Prime Video with ads? What's going on with that one? And Adweek, the publication, apparently cited three people familiar with the matter, saying the effective redundancy of Freeview has compelled Amazon to wind down Freeview? No, it means, it must mean free, wind down Freeview? No, surely that's a typo. Amazon, as far as I know, has no control over Freeview. It talks about a possible three tiers for Prime Video. The closing Freeview may result in Prime Video becoming a three tier service in the future. Okay, so it implies there is two tiers now, presumably one without ads and one with ads. Freeview could be replaced by a totally free ad supported bottom tier of Prime Video with some limits on available content. The middle tier would be the current ad-funded tier, there you go, which is available to Prime subscribers, and the top tier would then be the current ad-free option with extras like Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision, which have recently been taken away from some users. So it sounds like with Prime Video in itself, there's a there's a lot going on over there, you know, there's a lot of stuff happening over there, but the three-tier system could be interesting. It's essentially suggesting that Freebie, yes, becomes part of Prime Video, so instead of calling it Amazon Freebie, the bottom, you know, it's just the lowest tier of Prime Video. So you're still getting content for free, but with ads. And that knowing Amazon, they probably would severely limit the amount of content you'd be able to access. Just a bit of information about Amazon Freebie to get us all up to speed. It was launched in January of 2019, so it's a little over five years old. And the areas it serves currently are the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany and Austria, which is interesting. So the rollout indeed hasn't been that wide. The US, I understand, you know, it's arguably the biggest major market. The UK as well, we have a pretty sizable market as well. Germany and Austria, they seem like, you know, the, the odd outliers. Nowhere else within Europe has access to freebie. Seems bizarre, but you know, licensing, all that sort of stuff. There's a whole 
host of reasons why it's only going there. And it did launch as IMDb TV, as it mentions in the article before rebranding to what it is now to Freevee only in 2022. So the name itself hasn't even been around that long, a little over two years by the time it reportedly shuts down. But is this actually happening? This is where things get tricky. There's a, another site, this is from the rap.com, where they report Amazon themselves are saying no changes are coming to Freevee, despite reports of the streamer shuttering down. A spokesperson from Amazon said, Amazon Freevee remains an important streaming offering, providing both Prime and non-Prime customers thousands of hit movie shows and originals, all for free. So this casts some doubt into it, doesn't it? Just to compare it to Prime as well. So Amazon Prime, which includes Prime Video, costs, this is in American, this costs $15 per month or $140 a year. A membership that only includes Prime Video and none of the company's shipping benefits costs $9 a month. So again, this sort of calls into question, what is going on? There are some publications reporting that Freebie is winding down. Amazon or a spokesperson for Amazon saying that's not the case. I do admit winding it down by April seems remarkably quick, or as it reports. And I think, you know, it, the thing is, it makes sense either way. If Amazon decide to wind down Freebie in favor of supporting Amazon Prime Video, that does make sense, that whole potential three-tier structure. But I think also Freebie is good to exist as its own brand. It's been around for a while now. A lot of people, those who've like come from Neighbours, for example, now know the brand. I think give it a few more years at least. There's no details of like any operational cost. I mean, the, the Adweek publication is more citing the, the ecosystem, if you like. Now that Prime Video is supporting an, an ad-funded tier, it's sort of, people I guess are arguing, uh, is rendering Freebie some sort of redundancy. But that's not just for Freebie to worry about. There's also changes happening over in Scotland, where the BBC is announcing changes to the Scotland TV channel. That This is quite a surprise. It says, on the 24th of Feb, 2019, the day the BBC launched BBC Scotland across Linear TV, for the broadcaster, it was a massive U-turn after advocating for the closure of the Linear BBC3 in 2016. Ratings for the channel, as in BBC Scotland, have remained low, and now the BBC is planning to drop the channel's flagship premier news programme, The Nine. It wants to replace the program with a shorter bulletin at 7pm, and to do so, it's going to need Ofcom's approval, as the BBC Scotland channel operating licence requires the BBC to screen 250 hours of news on the channel each year. Additionally, News Review 7 Days and the entertainment show The Edit will also close this year. The BBC wants to cut the number of news hours it has to show on BBC Scotland, so it can put extra resources towards specially extended editions of Reporting Scotland on BBC One, plus new content for the BBC iPlayer and BBC Sounds. Now, as I've said in many a video, the BBC is under incredible pressure and strain at the minute, particularly financially. Yes, the licence fee is going up in April, not as much as in line with inflation. It still means the BBC are making tens of, if not hundreds of millions of pounds worth of cuts to all of their services. And I did, I did mention in other videos that different services, including BBC Scotland, could potentially be affected by these cuts. And it seems like they have. I mean, to lose your flag time news program and also, you know, have shorter news bulletins, cut different shows, it is a shame. But if, if they're saying that viewership is low, then maybe they haven't got any alternative. The new content purported includes a currently nameless topical current affairs program that's going to broadcast four times a week in the run-up to the elections. The program will be published as a podcast on BBC Sounds with a version also available on the iPlayer, the BBC Scotland channel and BBC One Scotland. BBC Scotland's debate night program will be extended from 24 to 30 episodes this year and the BBC also wants to be able to extend the 6.30pm edition of Reporting Scotland more often for a number of hour-long specials throughout the year. The specials form part of the broadcaster's plans to cover some of the year's biggest news events, including the UK election and Scotland's trip to Germany for the Euros. However, extending reporting Scotland would result in the programme clashing with the planned new 7pm news show on the BBC Scotland TV channel, unless that was moved around the schedule. So that, yeah, a lot of change, as you can see there, a lot of change coming to BBC Scotland. It's obviously not a channel that I access or use, but I don't know, if you access BBC Scotland, let me know what you think about this. Martin Geisler, or Geisler maybe, one of the launch faces of the night, will join BBC Radio Scotland's drive time presentation team. No staff will lose their job as a result of the plans, that is good, always nice to see people keeping their jobs. Effectively, the BBC is going to be reallocating budget and resources to where it hopes it will reach more users. A comment from Steve Carson, who's the director of BBC Scotland, said, In launching new shows and developing our digital services, these changes play to our strengths as an innovative broadcaster that delivers high-quality journalism to audiences across all our platforms, from TV and radio to online news, iPlayer and sounds. 
So they're clearly having to make some changes. I mean, launching a new linear TV channel in 2019 was brave to say the least, especially by the television landscape of the time. I guess they're hoping that by doing these new shows and developing these digital services, it's going to bring audiences, new audiences to BBC Scotland. I guess at least that's the hope. That's the vibe I'm getting here. So yeah, lots of cuts, lots of changes, lots of closures going on in the TV world at the minute. I mean, to recap, is Amazon closing Freebie? Maybe yes, maybe not. We don't really know for sure at this point. We'll have to see if Amazon themselves come out with anything a bit more definitive. BBC Scotland is facing cuts. And believe me, I don't think it's going to be the last BBC service that we're going to see face cuts or maybe even closure as we go forward in the next few years. It really is a bit of a, a bleak time for the corporation and the services that it offers. But I want to know what you think. What do you think about the news that we've touched on today? Do you think Amazon Freebie should disappear? Do you think it should just be amalgamated in, as a new tier into Prime Video? Or do you think it should stick around as is? Do you think it has merit being what it is? Same thing with BBC Scotland. What do you think about the cuts to that? Is it a service that you utilize up in Scotland or elsewhere? Let me know your thoughts like that in the comments down below. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on it. It really does help us out. Subscribe as well. We'd like to have you aboard. We've got lots of things in the works, longer projects, because I know some of you aren't necessarily the biggest fans of these discussion videos and me reporting on articles from like RXTV, the BBC and elsewhere. But again, these longer projects do take time. You know, I want to put a lot of research into them. And when you're straddling different jobs as well as YouTube and, and life generally, it's going to take longer time for that to come out. So doing these sort of videos, you know, they're a bit quicker, they're a bit easier to put together. And also it's more up to date news in the media world. So it's just I enjoy doing them. I enjoy giving my thoughts on these news topics like this. And I hope the majority of you do as well. But if it's not your cup of tea, that's fair enough. But rest assured, this isn't all that the channel is going to become. There are other projects in the pipeline as well. In the meantime, I've been Adam Martin from AMTV. Thank you for joining me. And I'll see you next time. Thank you to our patrons for helping to support the show, and a special thank you to Macra, Ethan Carberry Holt, Bruce Danton, Globe of Reviews, Derek Chambers, Sean Nock, Dodd Khan, Liam Domain, Trev Hughes, AJ Mac200017, Deck KP20, Simon Harrison, and Evan Hart38, our AMTV staff members.